win and to find a lot to improve upon. The detriment is uh, he's not very quick. No, and it's going to uh, hurt him down the line. All right. Uh, earlier this evening, Jason Litzow took on Carlos uh, Contreras. Ten-round featherweights. Uh, very interesting fight. And that is coming up. Yeah, the featherweights uh, provide good action there. The great action during the, the, the lighter weight guys. They fight with a lot more intensity. Pace is a lot quicker. Well, there's a lot of interest around Jason Litzow. Uh, he is considered a prospect. And we will go to that fight. We'll show you that fight. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Litzow just 22 years old, seven years younger than Contreras. He has significant height and reach advantages. Nice intangibles to have in a boxing match. So the big numbers favor Litzow. And no three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. Only the referee can stop the fight. And a fighter cannot be saved by the bell at all. So let's pick up this fight as shown here earlier. Round five. Round two underway. Jason Litzow and Carlos Contreras. Litzow with a height advantage. Good jab. Combos to the head also will go to the body. Known as a boxer puncher. And he is showing a good example of that description in this fight, Dick. The double jab and then the right hand behind it. That was a nice body shot by Litzow after the two jabs. And what he's doing is he's keeping a straight ahead fighter from walking right to him. So far, the quick feet and the reflexes of Litzow carrying the day. Contreras, on the other hand, over the last three years, is one in five. And he has, uh, <laughs> he has some very interesting quotes. One is, I guarantee Litzow won't knock me out. I am like a small Arturo Gatti. You need two fighters to bring me down. Well, I guess in that case, in the last six fights, he's done against 12 fighters <laughs> at that one in five record. Yeah, his last fight in October of last year was a split decision loss. And he did win a unanimous decision 10 rounds uh, last February. You know, it's something, Dick, uh, sometimes when a fighter comes out with the the most outrageous of the quotes. That's when their ability level is starting to slip. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Contreras uh, was a former WBU Super Bantamweight champ. One of the many, many alphabets. He lost the shot of, uh, at the IBF Super Bantamweight fight. They could get a shot at that, lost it. You could see why Contreras has trouble with certain guys, Dick. I mean, he needs to pull his way inside the taller opponent here. He should try to bob and weave a little bit. And once he gets in there, work the body. Otherwise, it's going to be a lot of this, and he's going to be clashing heads. Nice combination from Litzow. Kept it going, too. Here he is again. And don't you think, Dave, that Litzow is using his, uh, his height and his reach to good advantage? He's moving, he's keeping his range. He's keeping that space between he and, uh, and uh, Contreras. And not only that, over two rounds, he is dominating a Mexican fighter. That's a compliment, regardless of the guy's record, because Mexican fighters are so tough. Yeah, this is a big statement for Litzow in the first two. That'll do it for round two. Blow a little bit, just a little bit. All right? All right, listen. 
Now, when you start feeling comfortable now, I want you to look for that left uppercut, but you got to come back with the right hand. Otherwise, it's too dangerous to throw, you hear me? So when you start no feeling one. it, you start feeling it, that's what you're looking for. All right, no baby? You're doing beautiful in there. Just keep pace yourself. That's two rounds. You got a few more to go, all right? You're going to be chopping a tree down. You understand that, right? This guy's going to the side. Right. Well, no. I'm gonna, I, he can't hurt me. Litzow has everything going here. The nice left hook, the good solid right hand with total leverage. The best of the lot right there. The overhead look, same situation. Beautiful job here by Litzow. Round three is underway, scheduled for 10 featherweights. Question, Dave. Litzow is getting a lot of publicity of late. He was featured in Ring Magazine a few months back as a new face in the crowd. He is undefeated. But as you see him here, maybe it's not fair to you because uh, it's only the third round, but as you see his tools and what he has and what he does, do you think he's someday a contender? I do, to this point, and I, I think the uh, the write-ups have been justified, and he has a talent level that exceeds that of a regional fighter. You see a guy from St. Paul, Minnesota, you say, okay, well, he beat all those guys in Minnesota, but not this guy. He's been to Las Vegas, he's been to Houston, he's been to California, to New Jersey. He's winning fights outside of his circuit. That is a big step for a regional fighter to take. And Litzow is showing that he's got good credentials in. He does have some of that toughness that Contreras says he does not. I like it. I like his combination. Good combos to the head, the body. How about the power? It does not look from the lanky frame that he has that as he goes up the line that Litzow will be a big power puncher. He's going to have to mix in a lot of quick footwork, a lot of good boxing and a lot of good uh, ability to move in and out. He'll have to outpoint a lot of guys as he moves up the line. With his linear build, will he stay a featherweight? Uh, this guy could uh, could move up. You He's see him up in the junior old. welterweights. I could even see it. But the question is, you always have to avoid what uh, people call the, the Tommy Hearns syndrome as you move up. And what about the legs? Can they, can they support a big move up in weight like that? And it's a good question. I'd like to see a little bit more muscle on him. Well, if he moved up in weight, he obviously would have to do strength work. He'd have to do strength training. Yep. That can solve a lot of problems. If he has the speed, the coordination, the hand-and-eye coordination and the speed, by making him stronger, he'll utilize that speed and, and strength more effectively. I mean, he just looks very linear. Uh, you know, I can't believe that he's going to stay a featherweight very long. He's 22 years old, so he's got a long time to go. I guess, Dick, that in the, uh, the terms of the sanctioning bodies, he could go for the linear championship. <laughs> they have that these days. But, yet, you know, you look at his legs, and they do not look like the base of what would be a very powerful guy. So let's uh, let's see how he develops. I think he's an intriguing study. Well, he has long legs, so he has a high center of gravity, which isn't good for getting set to throw a power punch. Exactly. And that's it for three rounds. You're just starting to wear him down. Don't think you're in a rush, okay? Don't think you're in a rush. Keep working in combinations, and he's going to start slowing down. Then you can start thinking about when you you want to try to take him out. But right now... Let's out one step ahead of Contreras throughout this fight. Good left hook to the body, then he comes inside, fires the right hand. I like the defense there as he slips the punch. Round four underway. Scheduled for 10. Jason Litzow in the red, white, and blue trunks, known as the American Boy. And in the red trunks, Carlos Contreras, living in El Paso, El Paso, Texas. 
his first visit to Atlantic City. And it's only the second time that Litzow has been here in AC. What type of a fighter would give Litzow a bad time? Somebody you would take Contreras' style, who's a little quicker, who can bob and weave more on the inside and get to him, land some body shots and slow him down. What you're seeing now with Litzow is a guy that's got total control with the jab. He's able to move properly. So that's one type of fighter. The other type of fighter is somebody as tall as he is. If he finds somebody with a similar height, now he's not punching down at guys. He's not controlling with the jab, and it's a different ball game for him. Well, he lets his hands go. He's an accurate puncher. And Contreras only has one way to go. He's got to get inside. But when he gets inside, he's got to let his hands go. But he's not getting the opportunity here. Let's out scoring to the head. Doubles the hook. Comes with the right. And a counter right hand from Contreras. Contreras is tough, there's no doubt about it. Well, you know, we talked about that tough Mexican term before. My, my, uh, uh, one of my favorite boxing redundancies. You know, when don't you see a tough Mexican fighter? And here's a situation here where Contreras is taking everything. But you know what you have to like, Dick, is how Litzau has stepped it up. And he's stepping in and gambling a little bit here and trying to do the damage on Contreras. He has a little bit more savvy, a little bit more moxie than a lot of guys who are 16 and up. I like Litzow's movement. He moves. I like that he keeps range. Instead of being drawn into a brawl, because Contreras is trying to cut off the ring, trying to get him on the ropes, but now he's hesitant. Yeah, when you move properly, offensively, you're using your range. And then when you don't do that, you're backing up, you're retreating, you're off balance. But look at Litzow. Whenever he moves, he's still in position to punch. He is using the ring properly. And this style is tailor-made for him. The guy coming straight ahead. Litzow has been known to uh, showboat in the ring as well, show off. But so far, he's been all work, been serious as we come down to the end of round four. He's going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. You can take him out a little bit later. Seventh round, whatever. But keep testing him when you think the time is right. You know what you got in the tank. You're right. That's out getting good advice from the corner about testing Contreras, and he tests him right here. Look at the hips. Look at the leverage. It's all together. Compact assault. Round five on the way. Scheduled for ten. Contreras has uh, complained a lot, too, Dave. He, he claims that he's the victim of a lot of hometown decisions and that he's fought tougher opponents than Litzow. And he said, I will try to knock him out so the judges won't affect me. Now he's developing the script pretty well. It's starting to sound like a guy who's gotten used to losing as he comes in. And you can see in this white, you now things have gone against him here. There's a matchup against a guy who's taller, who's quicker, and, uh, and who's undefeated. His matchups have not been uh, very good uh, for Contreras. But on the other hand, I love the advice they gave Litzow between rounds. They said, you know, you don't have to be in a hurry. Stay outside, do what you're doing. We'll test him. We'll test him every now and then, and we'll just see how he stands up to it. They don't have to be in a hurry because they're putting rounds in the bank. You mentioned earlier that even though his last two fights were decisions, they were the best opponents. And so he is learning. 
those are the two. But he can't knock everybody out. And they were the two most valuable fights because he puts the rounds in, he gets off the deck, he wins a close fight. That's a big confidence booster because you know if you're in a title fight someday, you're going to have to win a close fight. You're going to have to win a round 12 in, in a fight that could go either way. So that was a big hump for Litzow to get over, and he passed. Litzow is a fellow who uh, is extremely grateful for what boxing has done for his life. Believe me, boxing fans, if you read the background of how this young man survived in East St. East St. Paul, Minnesota, you would be absolutely amazed. It's incredible. He was surrounded by drugs and alcohol, and it was just terrible. But he was able to get out of it, and he found a gym to box. It tells a big story, too, Dick, for, you know, people wonder about why people take up boxing. Even if you don't get into a top ten and do very well as a professional, and guess what? Turning your life around, giving you a purpose, setting your life straight. Boxing does that for a lot of people who you'll never see their names in their ratings, but their lives have been saved by the sport. Well, this is the one fellow that that's happened to. Litzal with the height and the reach, using it well. A lot of fighters with reach never use it effectively. We've talked about that many times. This guy is using it. Round five comes to an end. ready for a big world champion type shit, all right? You don't want to be square. That's his only chance to try to headbutt you. He's going to try to do something stupid, try to turn it around a little bit, all right? So just stay skinny and throw your combinations, all right? Both Do both hands this round, like a little, give me a little four or five punch combination once in a while, all right? That was a little bit of one twos this round, okay? Deep breaths, that was five, baby. You got five to go. So you know what you got in the tank, all right? We're getting ready for the next round. the same round as in Cabrón, Nunca. Nunca pasado. I'm going to go to the table. 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 Here we go. Round six, scheduled for ten. I liked what uh, Van, was it Van Sickle that said, uh, you know what you have in the tank? Yeah. Now see, that there's an interesting question. Do you know what you have left in the tank? Only he knows. I don't think I ever heard anybody say that in a corner between rounds to a fighter. Yeah, and until he had those last two fights, they would have never known what he had in the tank going into the second half of a fight. But now, He's learned to pace himself over the course of 10 rounds. And, and they're reminding the fighter how to disperse his energy in the course of a fight. And that's a bit of an art form. Contreras just keeps coming forward. He's tough. He just took a right hand, snapped his head back. He's taking a lot of punishment. Let's out. There's a right cross to the jaw. A right to the body. A combination to the head, rights and lefts. Contreras trying to counter back on the ropes. You have to love how Litzel attacked that situation. He went after Contreras, then he stepped back. Watch the subtlety when there's no room and it's over now. It stopped in the sixth round. And the Contreras was taking a lot of shots. His head was snapped back. A few times, very dangerous. We're talking about how Litzau was attacking, then backing up, then attacking, and taking the step back to create more offense for himself. And this is another one of those situations where they decided to test Contreras. And this time, Contreras did not pass the test. Now, as far as stopping the fight, well, that's a, a, a referee's judgment, but if you put enough pressure on, you put yourself in position where maybe you can get the referee to stop it. So 
by applying continual pressure. Now watch this now. This is beautiful. He backs Contreras up. Then he steps back, creates more room. Even when he was on the attack, he was not one dimensional. See the leverage is there. His hips are perfectly positioned. Then, after he has smothered himself, he'll step back. And then the referee will keep a good eye on the contest. Let's out, tees off, backs up, tees off, and backs up again. So he's continually setting up the offense without sacrificing anything. This is a textbook way of attacking with minimal risk. That is a picture-perfect scenario and the reward for Litzow. I like his leverage more than anything else. Yes. Well, we're ready for the final numbers. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Michael Ortega steps in and calls a halt to the contest. The official time, one minute, 17 seconds of round number six. The winner by knockout victory still undefeated. The American boy, Jason Litzow. Thank you. Thank you. Well, for Jason Litzow, Dick, I'll tell you, this goes on his highlight reel because it wasn't one shot that ends the fight. It is controlled aggression. He's opening up. He is opening up, but he is not getting caught with counter shots. Yeah, usually a guy opens up and he's vulnerable. But look at this. Love the way he goes in and then moves out. And he we, continues we, to pour it on. We have to keep in mind, too, Dave, that here's a fellow who had uh, 135 amateur fights and uh, only lost, well, 125 and 10 and was on a national team. So he got a lot of good schooling. Good schooling, some international experience, and he shows you that schooling in this fight good conditioning good leverage and and you know that what i love about he didn't he didn't get bored in this fight when you're dominating a guy you could get bored in the fight with john nalesco uh he was criticized uh, they thought that nalesco uh, won that fight anyway there he is he's on his way apparently he's 17 and 0 with 15 knockouts remember the name john litzow a featherweight right now could go up down the road.